Are planks one of the most overrated exercises or do they live up to their reputation? To answer this question we have to take a look at different points. So let's start right away with the muscle activation. The basic plank can be done on your forearms or in a push-up support position. Both variations target the same muscles and these are mostly located at the front side of your body. The plank is an anterior chain focused movement, so the main muscles you use are your abs and the hip flexors. Of course you need a lot of other muscles to stabilize your body like the quads, the serratus anterior, your delts and even your erector spinae which works as an antagonist to your abdominal muscles. Depending on the execution you can increase the activity of different muscles. A study from 2014 compared modified versions of the standard plank. A posterior tilted plank for example showed a higher ab, oblique and even erector spinae activation than the traditional plank. The most effective modification was the long lever posterior tilt plank. Of course this makes total sense because the longer the distance between your arms and your feet, the longer the lever. And the longer the lever, the harder it gets. Another modification we suggest is the protraction of your shoulder plates and a slightly flexed spine. With this modification you not only target your serratus anterior, it can also help to activate your abs. You can imagine it like a reversed hollow body hold. Keeping all those facts in mind, we move on to the question if the plank is an effective exercise or just a waste of time. Well, it depends. If you are already pretty advanced and can hold a basic plank longer than one minute, it's not that effective in terms of strength. Here we suggest the long lever plank. Just walk backwards with your feet and try to find the right position that you can hold for about 20 to 40 seconds. Please keep in mind that you should be able to maintain the posterior pelvic tilt at any cost. Not only to activate your abs optimally, but also to protect your spine. Another way to modify the plank are all kinds of dynamic variations. You can try plank to side plank rotations, knee to elbow planks and different versions of the one leg or one arm plank. The benefit of those exercises is that your muscles have a lot more work to do to stabilize your body. Another benefit, especially when it comes to the side plank, is that your spine not only does a flexion, but also rotation and lateral flexion. This means that you can work on your spine stability in different positions and with that activate other muscles. If you are a beginner and already struggle to hold a normal plank for about 30 seconds, you should know that the regular plank is one of the best basic exercises you can do. With this exercise you can improve your basic strength, coordination and body alignment. This is very important when you progress to other exercises like mountain climbers, push-ups and others. Most beginners are just totally overstrained if they have to aim for proper body tension in their core while maintaining the proper joint alignment in their arms and shoulders. So the basic plank can help you to learn and improve the ability to stabilize your muscles in the right way for more complex movements. Of course we also have to talk about the downsides of the plank. An often heard argument of the plank is that it is very hip flexor dominant. While this is true, you should know that many other app focused exercises also involve your hip flexors as well. No matter if you do flutter kicks, rollouts or knee raises. These exercises are some of the best when it comes to activating your rectus abdominis, also known as the six pack. So there is nearly no way around them. You also shouldn't worry too much about overtraining your hip flexors when it comes to strength exercises. Just follow a proper training program that trains your body in a balanced way without neglecting basic mobility. Most hip flexor problems are the result of sitting all day or repetitive movements like long distance running. We still want to give you some alternatives. So if you just want to isolate your abs as good as possible, you could do the hollow body crunch. This exercise is great for the upper and lower fibers of the rectus abdominis because you combine the right spine and pelvis movement. 
In addition, you can work with mobility and flexibility exercises to stretch your hip flexors or other overdominant muscles of your anterior chain. Alright guys, if you liked this video leave a thumbs up and don't forget to check our complete workout programs on kellymove.com. We offer a wide variety of different programs you can follow easily. Every program is designed as a step-by-step -step online course and comes with different levels. Benefit from our experience and make the most out of your time and potential. If you have any other questions, just leave a comment. My name is Alex and I'll see you in the next video.